So the, uh, the CRASH trial is a large, multi-center, randomized controlled trial of the effect of a drug called tranexamic acid in patients with traumatic brain injury. Tranexamic acid is a drug that reduces bleeding. It reduces bleeding in surgery. It reduces the risk of bleeding to death after trauma and postpartum hemorrhage. So this, does it change? Oh. So this man here uh, has just been hit by a Toyota in Thailand, and you can see his head's bleeding, but it's bleeding on the inside as well. So he's, he started bleeding inside his brain, and that bleeding is ongoing. And um, the slide on the left shows his CT scan at hospital admission, and the slide on the right shows 12 hours later. So patients with significant traumatic brain injuries bleed into their brain after they arrive in hospital, so perhaps giving them tranexamic acid can reduce intracranial bleeding and improve outcome. And that's the question that the CRASH-3 trial um, set out to answer. And it follows on the heels of another trial called the CRASH-2 trial, where we randomized 20,000 bleeding trauma patients to get tranexamic acid or placebo. We just got this incredible result. So just to familiarize with the, these, these kinds of slides, so the treatment, the treatment effect is expressed as a relative risk. So that's the risk of death due to bleeding in the group that got tranexamic acid divided by the risk in the placebo group. So if the risk is one, there's no, there's no, there's no effect. If it's less than one, if it's on the left, uh, that means treatment is good. And on the right, treatment's bad. And, and the boxes are uh, the point estimate of the relative risk, and the size of the boxes is proportional to how much information is contained in that estimate. And of course, the, the, the bars are the confidence intervals. So this, the CRASH-2 trial, crash trial showed that early administration of tranexamic acid reduces death due to bleeding. Late administration, giving it after about three hours, didn't improve outcome. On the basis of the CRASH-2 trial, tranexamic acid went into treatment guidelines around the world, um, except Australia, funnily enough. Um, in Australia, you thought, it was a crash two is a multi-center randomized control trial. Hundreds of hospitals all, in, in many countries all over the world. Um, lots of hospitals in high, low, high middle and low income countries. But in in um, in Australia, you didn't think these results applied to you because you thought you've got um, modern intensive care, modern trauma care, and so you didn't need it. I'm not so sure that that's right, but, you, but people, um, people believe that. Um, so it went into guidelines everywhere but Australia and New Zealand, except that the, the guidelines made an exception of patients with isolated traumatic brain injury. So, so you know, tranexamic acid saves lives in bleeding trauma patients, but patients who just have a head injury, we don't know. So CRASH-3 was to answer that question. Now the data before CRASH-3 were very small and not very reliable. Um, you can see that the confidence intervals are wide and the little boxes are very small. And um, small trials are not very reliable. Meta-analyses of small trials uh, give misleading results. So, you know, there was, a, there was a reduction in the risk of death with tranexamic acid, but we wanted to confirm that in a larger trial. So, the CRASH-3 trial was, uh, patients were eligible if they had, um, if they were adult with traumatic brain injury. Initially, we had a recruitment window of eight hours, but as, after a short while into the trial, we realized that Look, the treat, treatment's unlikely to be effective if given after three hours because patients bleed into their brain really quickly. And so you can only prevent something that hasn't already happened. So we, we think we made a protocol amendment to restrict recruitment to patients within three hours of injury. Um, 
and they could be randomized if they had any intracranial bleeding on a CT scan or if they had a, a GCS less than 12. Because patients with a GCS of less than 12, most of those patients will have some sort of intracranial bleeding and no significant extracranial hemorrhage because this was different to the CRASH-2 trial. This was about patients with isolated traumatic brain injury. And it was a long haul to recruit. Um, uh, we, we recruited 12,737 patients uh, from 175 hospitals in, in I, I think, nearly 30 countries. Um, and 9,000 of those patients, about just over 9,000, were recruited within three hours of injury. And we had lots of different countries, high, middle, and low-income countries, uh, lots of patients recruited from Pakistan, lots of uh, head injuries from unhelmeted motorcyclists, uh, lots of recruitment in the UK. Nearly all trauma centers in the UK took part, and uh, good recruitment in Malaysia, and a whole list of other countries. And this is the trial profile. So the big idea with randomized control trials, I love randomized control trials. I'm emotionally, you know, they move me. And um, so the big idea is if chance and chance alone determines who goes into the two groups, then you get two groups that are identical apart from the treatment. And um, so, you know, we had 12, nearly 13,000 patients randomized. And, 6,400 goes in this group, 6,000, and we got almost complete outcome data. We've got 99% follow-up. So, um, you know, that's really great. Now, the, the next slide, the next slide is um, baseline characteristics. Now, generally, when people look at randomized controlled trials, there's always this table one, which has baseline characteristics. But people sort of move over it really quickly. Don't do that because this is a miracle of medicine. Randomization is the best invention ever in medicine. It keeps patients safe from doctors. And, you know, so when you see baseline, just marvel in the power of randomization to give you two groups that are identical apart from the treatment. Look at this. This is Glasgow Coma Score of the intervention. They're identical to within a fraction of a percent. I mean, this stuff makes me want to cry. You know, it really does. <laughs> it's something really special. You should, you should feel it. <laughs> One of the things that, that did, did surprise us, because we, we, we watched the baseline characteristics, obviously blinded um, um, to the treatment group, but we noticed that there are a lot of patients who are being recruited with what we, call, we consider quite unsurvivable injuries. Patients with, you know, GCS of three and bilateral unreactive pupils. And so we were worried about that. Um, next slide. Again, you know, wonderful baseline balance in individual uh, GCS. But again, we had lots of patients, almost 1,000 patients with a GCS of three at baseline. So that was a bit of a concern because if patients are destined to die, if it's inevitable that they're going to die before they've received the trial treatment, then the trial treatment can't have any effect, and that would dilute the treatment effect towards the null. So that was a concern. Now, there were loads of deaths in this study. The information in a clinical trial resides in the outcomes. It's not sort of how big, how, you know, how many numbers were in the trial. It's how many events were in the trial. And there were 2,500 deaths in this trial. And so this trial is full of information. Um, now, as with the previous trial that was presented, we pinned down all our analysis before we saw the results in, in a statistical analysis plan that we published. So, you know, randomized trials are very rule-based. You know, they, we have ways of protecting ourselves from ourselves. And so we published the statistical analysis plan in advance of seeing the results. And in this statistical analysis plan, we said the primary outcome is head injury death among patients who are randomized within three hours of injury. And then we included, because of our concern about these patients with unsurvivable head injuries, we included this subgroup analysis, well, sensitivity analysis. We said we're going to exclude patients 
with a GCS of three and those with bilateral unreactive pupils at baseline because we don't think the treatment can work in those patients and that their inclusion would bias the treatment effect towards the null. So the next slide is the results. Now, it's very strange. I, I, anyway, I'll just show you. <laughs> Um, so, head injury death, all patients, so 18.5% dead in the tranexamic acid group, 19.8% dead in the placebo group. So it's, it's on the right side, there are less deaths in the treatment group, that's quite good. When we exclude patients with a GCS of 3 and bilateral unreactive pupils, the result gets more interesting. It was the, the, the overall effect was diluted towards the null as we'd anticipated. Now we get a relative risk of 0.89 and a confidence interval of 0.8 to 1. And so that's a 10% reduction in the risk of death. Now there are some people, there are some doctors, I don't know if any of them are here, they don't like thinking. And so they dichotomize things into being positive or negative and they choose an arbitrary value that they don't really understand of 0.05. Now, if there are any people like that in their room, they should leave now because the p-value for this is 0.053. <laughs> now, I don't hang out with people like that. <laughs> and if they've got children, I don't let my children play with them. We have to think of information in continuous terms and not dichotomize it into positive or negative. But it gets more interesting. So in patients who have mild and moderate head injuries, there was quite a dramatic effect. There was quite a big treatment effect, something like, um, you know, more than a 20% reduction in the risk of death. Now, this is really interesting. Because mild to moderate head injuries are over 90% of all head injuries in the world. And actually the scale of head injury is really quite unimaginable. Each year there are about 70 million new cases of traumatic brain injury in the world. And the number is increasing and not decreasing. So this could be, this is a potentially very interesting result a 20% reduction in the risk of death in people who've got mild and moderate head injury. The patients who've got the potential to benefit. The patients with severe head injury, we did some, um, we, we did some work with baseline CT scans. The patients with severe head injury at randomization, at baseline, they already have a head full of blood. So, it, you know, you can't prevent something that's already happened. Patients with reactive, if they've got bilateral reactive pupils, they've also got the potential to benefit. And we, did, we also see a substantial treatment effect in that group. So what we think is that actually, you know, that we are reducing intracranial bleeding, but, you know, you can only prevent it um, in patients in whom it already hasn't happened. Now... Um, we pre-specified this more complicated analysis, you know, a sort of, um, you know, a, a multivariate analysis. And then you've got this thing called the p-value for heterogeneity, and it's quite small here. So the p-value for heterogeneity, that, that's saying, look, do these results really differ according to severity? And the p-value is quite small, so it does seem to suggest that there's a difference in the treatment effect according to severity. Now, we... We, uh, I've, that the severity was the first pre-specified subgroup analysis. The second one was, was time. So we thought that the treatment effect would be mo much more effective when you give it early because we're trying to prevent something. And so this is the overall result. It wasn't as dramatic as we thought. There was a sort of little bit of a trend towards um, more benefit, earlier treatment being more effective. But the problem is that it's time to treatment is mixed up with severity. So patients with severe head injuries get to hospital quicker. And in the severe head injury group, there was less of a treatment effect. Patients with mild to moderate head injuries get to hospital slightly later 
and that was the group in, in whom there was a treatment effect. So we had to look at the effect of time separate in, in the mild and moderate and the severe, otherwise it's all mixed up. And when we did that, there was quite a strong interaction with time to treatment in the patients in whom there was a treatment effect. So in the patients with mild to moderate head injuries, those were the potential to benefit. Early treatment seemed much more effective. In patients with severe head injury, where there didn't seem to be any treatment effect, possibly because it was too late and, the, and the, you know, the, it had already been done, intracranial bleeding, there was no evidence of, of that time to treatment may, made any difference. So the results of the CRASH-3 trial in the context of what's gone before. Now, so this slide shows the previous evidence and the current evidence. Now, I haven't added the current evidence to the previous evidence because I think the previous evidence is unreliable. But there was another trial in, uh, of exactly the same dose of tranexamic acid, a small trial, 1,000 patients, it, um, done in the United States, which pretty much got exactly the same result numerically. And so it's legitimate to put those two trials together, I think. And there is a reduction in head injury death with tranexamic acid, about 10%, but this is head injury. Um, so you, you only expect modest treatment effects because a lot of the damage is done at, at the time of impact. And you, nothing you can do about that. So this is probably, I believe, the first evidence for a drug that's neuroprotective in patients with head injury. Now, the reason why I think we shouldn't look at p-value less than 0.05 is because I don't think p-values, behind every p-value, there's something called a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the treatment has no effect. Now, that's the wrong way to think about the CRASH-3 trial, I think, because the CRASH-3 trial really is a subgroup of the CRASH-2 trial. It's almost like, you know, we did 20,000 patients with uh, extracranial hemorrhage. We've added in another group of patients with traumatic intracranial hemorrhage. Now, all, in the CRASH-2 trial, all of the treatment effect was on the day of the injury. It's only an eight-hour treatment course. People exsanguinate on the day of the injury. And tranexamic acid reduced the risk of bleeding to death on the day of the injury. In the CRASH-3 trial, intracranial hemorrhage deaths happen on the day of the injury too. You can't see it. Um, or you can see the CT scan, but that's when the patients die of intracranial hemorrhage. And you get exactly the same result in the CRASH-3 trial as we got in the CRASH-2 trial. Numerically identical. That makes us, I think, more certain that tranexamic acid is an effective treatment for patients with trauma. Now, this is just for doctors in Australia who think our results don't apply in sophisticated, clever intensive care units or treatment uh, trauma systems or whatever. So this is the results stratified by low income, middle income, you know, low and middle income and high income countries. So the results are exactly the same in patients. You know, if, if anything, there's slightly, la slightly bigger treatment effect in high income countries. But I think these results apply to Australians because Australians have got heads, <laughs> fundamentally. And actually, we're all, we really emphasize the difference between ourselves, but we are so remarkably similar that the differences are minuscule compared to our similarities. We're, we're one species. So secondary outcomes. I'll go through these quickly now, in case I'm running out of time. Have I run out of time? I've run out of time. There we are. So I'm, I'm going to just show you no increase in disability in survivors, no increase in vascular occlusive events. There's lots of people who will say tranexamic acid increases the risk of pulmonary embolism, DVT, and stroke. It does not. 
we've randomized something almost over 50,000 randomized patients. Tranexamic acid does not increase the risk of vascular occlusive events. No increase in vascular occlusive events. So to summarize, tranexamic acid is safe in traumatic brain injury. It reduces head injury deaths. There is no increase in disability in survivors, and patients should be treated as soon as possible after injury. This research was funded by the public. Um, it, it was funded by um, the British government, largely. And it's a sort of very special thing, I think. It's a gift from the public and actually the, and from patients, because 13,000 patients participated in this trial, 2,500 of which died. So this is a very special gift to the world. It's a gift of knowledge. Now, you can disagree with it, and, I, and you can, but please engage with it. All I ask you to do is actually consider it. And the results are published today, I think, in The Lancet. Um, thank you very much for listening.